Let's keep this hand. This is a pretty awesome. Deathrite Shaman Lilia. This is very modern. This is any 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 modern fans out there? Hit me up in the comments. Tell me. But I actually I legit used to run a modern deck with these cards. Deathrite Shaman Liliana. Maelstrom Pulse. No glimpse because this was an hour when I played. But yeah, these, these are old cards and they're all really good. Now the issue is we can't play Liliana turn two sadly, but we can ramp. Glimpse the core. Definitely a really welcome addition to the format, even though like green doesn't need more ramp, does it? But it's two mana. And I think this has definitely gone under the radar. I don't think many people um, have realised this card is here. Let's go for the tap land. And we'll kill the ramp. I mean, it's scary because Abomination of Lanoir gets bigger for each elf in their graveyard and the elf they control. Do we swing or just... Yeah, we'll just swing for one. Because we only have green mana up, we can only exile a creature to gain two. But exiling that, very, not too impactful. Unless, of course, we want to make Abomination a bit weaker. How much have we got? We've got we've actually got four in the graveyard, which means our eyes only now next turn will be able to help us. But for now, I think we go for Liliana. No more distractions. Make them sack elf. Haven't you ever heard of Yeah, actually. I think that's that's fine. So we can we can now block the Liliana, keeping the Pesage up. Having Pesage is nice as well. If they play something, we discard a land, and that's important because by exiling a land from a grave, we get to ramp one. Or well, they're saying that it's the same difference at this point. Next time we can just play it anyway to get Izoni out, but cut down. Oh, that's a shame. I guess we can exile a creature just to weaken the uh, commander. Playing a non elf and an elf tribal. I mean we I mean we do that to be fair. <laughs> ah, so here's the interesting part. In order to kill Liliana, they now they couldn't play their abomination, so Yeah, we'll see. So even if they kill the Izoni here, we still get two spiders. Uh we'll get rid of four mana. Luckily, we've got another four mana, so if we get to attack next turn, we get to create two more spiders, which is pretty nice. And any mass blocking or attacking is really good against elves. This is probably the most terrifying art I've ever seen. They're all creepy faces, but the face in the foreground, it, that red one, looks like red skull. That's just terrifying. Guardian Project. Yeah, we're going to kill that, I'm afraid. Nice. Swing in, create some more spiders. Damn, she's freaking good. Oh, she's so good. <laughs> Just randomly making spiders. It's great. She's actually a lot like Grave Titan in, in quite a few ways. Greetings, fellow travellers of the multiverse. Prepare yourself for a wild ride through the realms of cardboard chaos and the bizarre beauty of mana manipulation. Grab your dice, kiss your lucky charms, and let's dive headfirst into the weirdest, wackiest world this side of Ravnica. Just remember, sanity is optional, but laughter is mandatory. So today we're looking at Izoni Center of the Web, the World Wide Web. Now, interestingly, the first Izoni that came out in the last replica was kind of bollocks, and nobody really liked to use her, and she was kind of boring. But this one, I feel like R&D have redeemed themselves, and I do like it when they can finally rectify something that's boring with something that's utterly, devastatingly, technically amazing. So she comes in, you can collect Evidence 4, which basically means exile CMC 4 from your graveyard. If you do that, you create two black and green spiders with menace and reach that's already a hell of a lot of words so she does that whenever she enters battlefield or attack so i call us a titan ability which is pretty apt because it's a six mana so a titan ability is normally just it goes back to the the five titans that used to have like sun titan grave titan they came in and they attacked they did the same thing so this is pretty epic already to have that stapled on but then you can also sacrifice four tokens to surveilled two draw two and gain two it's a lot of tokens but the deck is equipped to be 
doing such things. The deck is kind of loopy how many things it can actually do. It's, it's actually insane. It's quite unique because it's not just a mill deck. It's not just a token deck. It's not just a graveyard deck. It's, it's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, so try to cram in the Myco Tyrant. Not sure how good it is in this deck, but whenever you uh, descend, you get f funguses. Pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's hard to kind of surmise it in the first intro. More of this will be in the deck deck at the end. But yeah, Old Rotstein, beginning of your upkeep, you mill a card and whatever you mill, you get something based on what you mill. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, there's so many things. Bitter Blossom makes tokens every turn. Orcish Bowmasters makes a token. Essica's Ch Chariot makes a couple of tokens. So you get the picture. Pretty much everything makes tokens or gives you a couple of bonuses. Uh, Panamonica, we're going to try and abuse this as well because there are actually quite a few ETBs in this deck, which is kind of interesting. Didn't really think of that with a Golgari build. But yeah, let's see how we do today. So don't forget, it's a very technical deck. So you have to keep your brain open, alive, active. Um, you have to kind of, you'll probably make many mistakes just like me. But yeah, if you can get to grips with this, if you can get to the full potential of this ability of Izoni, she's awesome. And um, yeah, I, I kind of want the paper version now. I've seen this. She's she's just incredible. So let's see how, how the games go. And I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned right to the end for the deck tech. But yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, going first against Cura. Now, believe it or not, Cura is tier one. She's very powerful. Again, I've said it many times recently, but I don't really even know if the concept of tiers is, is even a thing anymore, but we'll see. They probably have an elf here. Pretty much, yeah, they get to ramp by one. So they're going to get turn two Kiora, which is kind of uh, devastating, really. But at least we have some aggression with the Grim Flare. We can kind of pressure her, even though she has seven loyalty, which is absurd. She can't tick up, but she can untap stuff. And that's the scary part. She can just... On tap stuff, draw cards. It's, it's kind of ludicrous. Oh my goodness. They are going to play some big stuff very, very soon. You know what? I'm not even going to bother attacking Kiora because we can't make a dent in her. We're just going to try and hit them and surveil. Now we have to trample, so that block didn't probably didn't feel so good. Oh my goodness, some great things here. Doubling season. If we play binding the double, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, and black market connections, okay. Man, that Savelle three is incredibly good. That's such a deep. I knew this card was good. When I used to use this in standard with a really weird green black build. Um, Kura. Oh boy, that is going to be. Pretty annoying. I think we just go for all three modes here. Doubling season. So if we kill that, they can get a spirit. I don't know what to do, to be honest. Because if we. Mm, I guess we'll try and kill it. So they can either get a spirit creature or they can get three lands. Both are kind of annoying. I'm happy that the chariot is in the graveyard though, because we can play Izoni and get loads of spiders out. Especially we've got double season and parallel lives, but the issue is we don't we probably don't have very good timing for all this stuff. Oh my goodness, Lotus Field. Do we just Ah, we we still can't kill Kiora, there's no point. Might as well just keep surveilling. For more answers. Just keep putting stuff in the graveyard, fueling our zoni. We'll see what happens. I, I don't like my chances here. They've got... If they get Lotus Fields, they're going to have a lot of mana here. Six mana, potentially. Seven mana. Ideally, we want to put stuff in the graveyard for Grimflay to get bigger. Because when is a 4-4? Four, four? Now we're talking. Now we can start pressuring the Cura. Bramble Familiar. Uh, okay. Let's get moving. Just taps for green at this point. They can return it to the hand. Fatal push. That's pretty cool. We just keep needing to get more answers, really. Get a forest. Uh, oh, we can even get one that surveils. That's crazy. Love those lands. Vraska. 
That's actually a really great card, because that can continuously kill the Cura. Continuously kill the Cura. Now that's a bit of illustration for you there. See if we can push the Bramble Familiar off a cliff. They might have a counter spell. I do want to pressure the Cura if possible. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. We've got two attackers. Do we have an instant in the graveyard? No, which means that this will turn Grimflare into 4-4. Oh, I love this deck. This Sometimes a deck comes along and it's just pretty exciting. The thing is, this is, could be it, you know. It's only... Is, so there's a lot of words on here. I think because she's six mana, probably people don't really see how good she is um, until they use her. They're using the gate. Interesting. Do we just double attack Cure? Let's see if they block. Pardon me. Um, okay. Because we want to stop them getting that Lotus Field on tap. And obviously we... I could have gone for the Vraska to kill the Familiar here. They're going to block. They're going to block with both. So they, they're desperate to keep Cura alive. Leave my squids alone. Which is good to know. That's good information because it means that this Vraska is now going to be very meaningful. See you later. And it means they have to spend mana to play the Cura before they get to just get six mana for nothing. Yeah, Lotus Field and Cura decks is just kind of is crazy. Crazy good. I think I've built a pretty nice shell here. I mean Tonali does devastation for zero. Should I be scared? There's no Arbor Elf. What? What? Is that... Are they basically saying to me that they would have had... So that would have been... 6, 7, 8, 9... They could have maybe got something really good? I don't know, that seems like a strange concession there. To just play, pay X for zero, but... Yeah, you can see, even though they had a pretty good advantage, with just a few removal spells and some luck, we managed to take them out. Weird ending though, I don't really understand that. Now I presume that we're facing a mono black discard style deck or reanimation at the very least. We'll see. Oh my goodness. <sighs> now we've got some pretty cool synergy here. The Bitter Blossom plus the Gala Greetis is really good. Because the Gala Greetis doesn't care that the creature's a token. So, we are just going to be gaining some nice triggers, uh, odds and evens. We'll see if this extension event comes back to bite us in the ass. Although it does kill their Junji really well, or should I say it exiles their Junji really well, so we're probably going to be focused on killing the odds soon. Now, Black has a surprising amount of cards now that can deal with enchantments, so I don't feel that the Bitter Blossom is that safe, to be honest. It, it, it has come full circle. They, they used to have zero ways to answer enchantments, maybe one. But yeah, that has changed. Um... Both of their things can be pumped. That's actually really annoying. It's just a pump tribal deck. <laughs> Oh, your opponents can't gain life. I didn't even realise that. Shake down a heavy. Okay, so I guess we're just going to ramp. I'm kind of happy, happy to get rid of the odds now. One. This. I mean, we could even go for Izoni. But there's nothing in the graveyard to gain advantage. So maybe that's a bad idea. But then she can block. She can block. Which is fine. Go over the top. 
And yeah, they might play another odd creature, which means we can get another hit. And we only lo currently lose the Delighted Halfling. And if we killed the Halfling with the Exile before he's only came out, we might not have been able to play her. So we'll see. Okay, another even. That's annoying. Six damage. No, I don't want them to draw a card. We'll just take the six. It's fine. Go for another treasure. Death Sprout. Yeah, I'm happy to get rid of their stuff here because we only lose one thing. We're swinging with the Izoni. We get two spiders. This knight is actually really annoying because we can't gain life. It's it is it is hindering us. It really is. And that was enough apparently. Even I wasn't too confident there, but I think the reason there was they didn't get the lands they required. So yeah, I guess we get get to go up. <laughs> I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to tell you this video is not sponsored and because of that the channel does need help from people like you. So if you do want to support the channel in your own way you can like and subscribe which is completely free but if you want to go the extra mile you can donate to the channel via my Ko-fi link below or become a channel patron and if you become a channel patron you can get a custom video of your choice. Check out the details below. All right facing mono blue Thassa. Now this one is a bit painful I have to say it's it's not the um the deck you want to face because it's probably going to be a lot of counters if it's just ETBs then I have a lot more respect for it um, but yeah this making our legendary spells uncountable is kind of epic so we want to keep her alive as long as possible legendary spells planeswalkers if we can resolve lol that'd be pretty sick we really want them to tap out here man of war they're going to return the halfling Interesting. What's the wording here? Yeah, so we can kill Man of War. Um, why is the game just paused? That was weird. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Just no priority or anything. It's just paused. Okay, so... Let's get Lolf out. This is going to be sick. Yeah, so... I guess I they thought they were... Um, there's a weird bit of lag here for some reason when I'm activating abilities. It doesn't even go over to them to... Oh my god, effect in monocolor. You know someone's a bit of a sweat when they're doing that. Really? That's such a sweaty move. <laughs> monocolor fetch. No Cavern of Souls. Ooh. Nice, okay. So we want to name... Um, what type is she? She's a... Elf detective. I guess we're good for elf. We probably have more elves than detectives. And I guess we're good for parallel lives. Hmm. I'm. St <laughs> I'm still trying to get over the fetch, which suggests they probably have more fetches. If if that's the kind of person they are, they they might as well put all the fetches in, right? It's such a tiny, tiny, tiny. Um. It's like a super tiny difference it makes by fetching. I'm not going to go into it because I can't really be bothered. But but yeah, normal people don't do this. Too open. Let's do some drawing here. Good minions are loyal. So play our commander. I mean, ideally, we get the Delighted Halfling out. Or we could go... <sighs> I'm not 100% sure what to do here. I feel as though... I want to put Lulz to more than one loyalty. Um, So I will actually do this, even though we don't get any spiders yet. Firstly, we don't... They don't get to counter it. This is super weird. Unless they go into full control, I don't really know what this is. 
because I don't need it. The game now pauses before you get to tap mana for it, which is kind of weird. The printer doesn't have priority until we've actually done anything. Unless, unless that is just how full control looks and feels like now, which makes it even more toxic. Try and counter it. Go on. Do what I demand. Go on, try and counter it. Oh man. Okay. So Lolth's at two loyalty, which is good because it means that if they bounce either of these guys, they can't just kill Lolth out of the blue. Um oh, God, Rumor's Rebuke. That is so annoying. Okay, fine. Rivers Rebuke. I guess if they have nothing else. So what should we do then? Let's just keep annoying them with Planeswalkers. And I'll happily kill this because it is giving them incremental advantage basics each time. And you know what? We'll give for the Halfling as well because making our stuff uncountable is... It's going to be the name of the game here. And we have two sources of uncountable. Elf or Legends. Which is a good meteor golem. Okay, this is not good. Oh, that's really bad. They're going to just kill everything we have now. Okay, that is horrendous. Now we are going to struggle. Let's just get loads of mana, I guess. 12 mana. What can we do? What can we do? We're desperate here. So please, so we got eight mana. We cut four, five, six. Oh, it depends what we do, doesn't it? If we do this, it means we have more mana. Because we create two spiders. Which we can then sack. That I may I will get what I want. About our lives. Yep, this is annoying to say the least, especially if they have flicker. Oh, please don't bounce that. Okay, cool. Lots of blockers. That's all we can really do now, to be honest. If they have flicker or... Oh, no, 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 no. They're going to get double triggers on Meteor Golem now. This is so toxic. I really wish we didn't use the Fraska now. Oh, well. Golem, so they're going to be able to kill two things. That's so annoying. How the hell are we going to stop this? Especially given that they have blue mana open as well. Okay. Gross. Absolutely gross. Exchange for loyalty. Terra Sonda. Well, that's an answer. Uh, do we just go for a decoy spell? I really need this to resolve. Nice. Okay, so now we can kill the Meteor Golem. Hopefully, please don't give the text proof. Thank God. Okay, that would have just been game over pretty much. Oh, that was scary. Okay, I'm going to just leave these guys back as blockers. So Roaming Throne is pretty useless now until they flicker this. But yeah, that golem, that got so many hits. So many goddamn hits. So they can tap two things if they want to attack in with the Roaming Throne. Because they've got the ability with Thassa here, which I always forget. But Ward. I mean, I would happily tr triple block here. Okay. 
Ah, they're going to do that first. Interesting. Okay, so we can single block then, I guess. Fine, and they want to leave four men up again. Oh, jeez, still trying to recover from that meter gun. I told you Thassa would be painful. I told you. And they're going to flicker it. Now, it's going to be suspicious depending on what they choose here. If they choose something... Can we try and guess what it's going to be from the type? God. They choose God? Oh, God. <laughs> That's scary. So... Right, they can't counter this, because we've just used Cavern of Souls. <clears throat> nice. Beautiful. We have 27 things to go over. I like how it tells you what you have. Four. Okay, sadly I have to exile that, but we get some stuff. Let's draw some cards. I'd love to draw a duress or something. Oh, Death Sprout. It does have War 2. I'll try and go for the Myco Tyrant here. Not that it really does anything, but... Counter target spell. Man, this is so annoying. But it's fine. We're not dead. We're not dead. If they're just going to be countering stuff randomly, then I'm fine with that. They've already used River's Rebuke. Ah, Seeker Oracle. That's going to get him. Uh, that's going to draw him cards. Look at the top two. One of them in your hand and one in the bottom. Yeah, that's going to be annoying. <clears throat> we need to now I want to kill this the thing that I'm at flickering this and choosing human or wizard no they're going to do that first yeah that makes sense to get the immediate value they're probably desperate for cards I'm very tempted to sack stuff as well but I need to keep blockers back really Bitter Blossom. Okay. Let's go for the decoy spell again. That's going to be really good with Izoni. Interesting. They don't care about that. Do they have a counter for this? I mean, it's, it doesn't feel very cool killing a common, I, I have to admit. But it is drawing them extra cards every single turn. And, and obviously I'd rather kill the th Roaming Throne. But the Roaming Throne doesn't draw them cards. So. Come on, dude. Don't make me whip out another movie review. Not now. There's not enough time for that now. Okay, we got rid of that. Nice. I suppose we, this is interesting. This is actually really in, like cool to see how Golgari works. Because it just shows you that... So the Loth creates spiders and gets loyalty when other things dies. And Izoni can sacrifice things to gain things back. It's really cool. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I guess we could just attack with Izoni. And if they trade with the throne, then whatever. Not that bothered. Because we also, remember, get to create more spiders here as well. And, you know, they seem to be uh, really enjoying this throne. Wow, okay. And if they, for any crazy reason, have another way to mass bounce, we can just sack all of our tokens to draw, surveil, do all sorts of stuff. So they were just wanting to get rid of that. Okay, fair enough. I feel like we're in a pretty commanding position now. Because we're essentially saying they need something like Whelming Wave. Another big bounce spell, which is entirely possible. But I don't think there's that many more asymmetrical ones. Most bounce spells now will affect them as well, I think. Warzone Duplicator. Return to our creature opponent controls with power less than its power to its owner's hand. Okay. So they're just going to go for a token? 
if it was a token, conjure it into your hand. What? Oh, sorry, if it wasn't a token. Well, I might as well sacrifice it. One. They're all the same, aren't they? Two, three, four. Oh, wow. It's a lot of triggers. <clears throat> Intrigued how they didn't go for the maximum there. Oh. Oh, there's some good ones. That's really good. They're both artifacts. So the Rex Sage will be able to deal some damage here we can resolve. Obviously, the annoying thing is they can obviously duplicate this trigger with Thassa. Exclusion Mage, they're going to ban something else. Okay. Another token. Oh, jeez. It's just going to be lots of bouncing stuff. Okay. Fine. Warzone Duplicator. I mean, it's the same difference. Oh, no, that, now it becomes bigger. Okay. I see what they did there. They're going to conjure a duplicate into their hand. They're going to have their own Izoni. Okay, that is pretty annoying given how much stuff they have in their graveyard. Fine. Right, let's see if we can do some decoys again. Again, my decoy spells working pretty well these days, I have to say. So, go for Rex Sage. I think we kill the duplicator because we do not want them to get loads and loads and loads of our cards, essentially. They can bounce stuff, but I don't want them to get copies. That's just going to be annoying as hell. My children will take care of you. Uh. I'll tell you what's more annoying, though, is the fact that their Thassa is going to let them get extra spiders as well. If they really want to. Oh, jeez. This is... <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. Is our Ozoni their way out of this? Who knows? Legit. Going for that as well. And they've got 31 mana in their graveyard to get to play around with. As if. As if. This is really to put a kink in the in the workflow here. I have to say, well, it's definitely a challenge. They can do that a lot, which I'm not happy with at all. Make a map token. But well, they only have two tokens, so oh, three tokens now, so they can set maps as well. Jeez, they're getting more synergy than we are. Huh, they're just getting rid of it. Cold Steel Heart on top. Where's that going to go? Graveyard? Fantastic. Powers the Izoni. One card in hand. What are they going to do? Bounce one of our things, get another map, or Izoni? Oh, of course, Izoni. I wouldn't be so bothered if they played a bit faster. And I know that's a bit rude, but I don't care. I, I, I haven't got all the time in the world, <laughs> essentially, to do this. I'm on a very limited time schedule, so I don't mind dying. Just hurry up, <laughs> basically. That's the meanest you'll ever see me, is player speed. I just, I can't tolerate that. Rush Rebirth. Choose a creature when this dies. Touch a library for a creature card. Less mana Pokemon. That's actually pretty good. It includes theirs as well. I'm just glad we've got Reaches and we've got Flyers. The Bitter Blossom's probably going to kill us, annoyingly. This is what I mean about player speed, though. They know they can't counter it. So why are they just lingering? Everything is just lingering. Um, I, I don't really know how to answer that question. So let's let's hurry up, dude. This ultimate could be good eventually as well. Maybe we just do that. 
Because the more tokens we create anyway, Izonia is going to give us. Um, this is instant, so we can do this whenever we want. Hold back. I think we'll see what they do in their turn. I might have some shenanigans. For instance, it's tempting to use the Phyrexian Tower. Sack the Izoni. Use the Rush Rebirth. We get something else from our graveyard into play. In fact, they just get to draw two and Savelle two, and yeah, that's just crazy. Yeah, we're feeling our own wrath here. Not good. Now what? Oh my goodness. Come on, dude. You've got a faster deck. You surely know how to play it. They can return it to its hand. Okay. I suppose that means they can just choose another type. If that's what they so were so inclined to do. Eleven mana. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can do as only twice. That's right, get the keyboard and start typing elf. Human. Interesting. They're going to give a double bounce. Clearly they're going to give a double bounce. That is certainly not what I expected. They, they've put all the effort into and all that time into naming human when they could have just gone for Izoni and got eight. Um, they could have got four spiders. <laughs> now the thing about bounce is it's not very good against us because... Our commander can just sacrifice stuff. They're going to bounce it back to our hand and let us have more triggers. That's just silly. Actually, we'll keep the flyers. Or do we? Oh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we're basically going to have ultimate for the Loth soon, um, which is interesting. I will not do I will call the Ooh. Boseju. I'm actually going to try this now on the Roaming Throne. Get that out of the way. We can pay the ward. This is a uh, activated ability, which means it's very difficult to counter. Nice. We get a land. I, c I should have used a Rush Rebirth there, to be honest. That was foolish. And... We'll do this again, I think. <coughs> Losing my patience. Losing the patience here. I want to get the ultimate of Loth. You know, and then once we hit them, they're just going to pretty much lose the game, hopefully. Alyssa and Solemn. I'm not that interested in those. Oh, okay. That is going to be nice. And 15 life, one card in their hand. They would just probably want to use the four mana to tap Thassa. Things should be coming to a head here. Whenever an opponent is dealt damage by one or more creature control, the player's lost less than eight. They lose life equal to the difference. So whenever we hit them with something, they will lose... Never put it as dealt combat damage. If that player lost less than eight, they lose life equal to the difference. So we hit, we hit them for one, they'll take eight. It's pretty cool. Right, what do we want to do? Broken Bond can kill the Solemn if we really need to. But I think what I'd rather do is Elspeth Nightmare. Let's try and see if we can resolve this and get that goddamn last card out of their hand. Kill the only flyer means that our Bitter Blossoms will eventually be able to just hit them over the top. Why did they use Cavern of Souls for that? Anyway, it's fine. It's pretty annoying, to be honest. Why did they use Cavern of Souls for that? I guess it doesn't really matter here. 
Minus two, minus one. They don't have any X ones. Each opponent mills fire, then exile each opponent's graveyard. That's actually going to be good in this case. And yeah, we'll be for that as well. And. I think we'll just leave up the rush rebirth here. Okay. They have got a lot of mana to tap stuff, though. That's something I'm a bit worried about, I suppose. Here's the weird thing as well. Like, now they've done they've done that here. So I can just play another... So now I'm just going to play another blocker. They should have done that in my end step. The timing of that was very unusual, just because they didn't want me to attack. Why? How could I even attack with this? It's a 3-3 that just came in with summoning sickness. Also... The way combat works is you want to tap the things that you don't want people to block with. Oh, sorry, you want to... Yeah, so what they should have done is tap something else, because if they attack us with the Izoni, we're less likely to block with the Hourglass Coven anyway. So we, tapping this actually does zero. They needed to tap the things like the things I would have blocked with. Yeah, that's interesting psychology. Now they have a... Hexproof untap ability, which doesn't really do much. If they don't get rid of this hag, yeah, damn. That was, I'm so sorry, guys. That was so painful. I mean, sometimes you do play people. The, the thing is, I am, I am going to be mean here because if you play Thassa, you're in the big leagues. I'm sorry. This is, this is not a light deck. I mean, if you just, if we go back to the beginning with the Flood of Strand. This person knows how to play Magic. Um, you know, I don't. I just don't really have time for people that not only just playing toxic decks with counters and stuff all the time, also doing really slow plays. And if I don't know, it just feels weird. Like if you can't, basically, if you can't stand the heat of the kitchen, just get out of the kitchen. So I'm saying. Okay, we get to go first against Ezrim. We recently made this guy. He's pretty good. Pretty good. I'm starting to really question if. Green black might be one of my favourite colour pairs. I just love all these cards. They all do everything, I guess. They've got really good versatility. Golgari. Starting strong with a colourless land. They chose Detective, didn't go for the meme choice of literally any other type for lols. I love doing that. If you're facing non blue, you might as well just choose, I don't know, herring. I don't know. Oh. These are all really good cards. Apart from maybe the Sangram Brushstroke. Maybe keep this on top. Yeah, I, I like those, I guess. Um, although the Settle will... It doesn't shuffle, does it, if you seek? So the Parallel Live should remain where it is on top. But they are setting up big time hit here. Just going for the attack. So they've got any removal. I mean, they could have board wipes, which would just really upset me, but. Um, nice Grim player doing a lot of work. Surveilling. Oh my goodness. Doubling season. I love this card so much. It feels like cheating. I think we go settle and duress. Oh, another forest. That's actually perfect. What have we got here? Board wipe? They do have a board wipe. Okay, get rid of that. They also have the Browse Expertise. But I'm less bothered about that. We can just redeploy. And they have the River's Rebuke. I mean, that actually looks a lot like the deck I, I built. So they've frozen them. I mean, I feel like the River's Rebuke is probably going to come out, isn't it? Unless we go for Broken Bond... On the Signet. Slow him down a little bit. So now they need two lands to go for the Rebuke. Okay, so they got the one for the Expertise if they really want to. Yeah, this looks a lot like the deck I built, which is kind of cool. Even down to the printing of that. 
Cloud Blazer. Now they're going to return that next turn with the Rise Expertise. I see, I see what they're going to do here. I see it. So before they can do that, I think we just kill it. Oh man, it's kind of cool to see Moan build. I'm pretty sure it is. I, I can't see LVD or CGB making um, an Ezrin build, to be perfectly honest. Savelle 3. Oh, look at this Savelle with Savelle. It feels like cheating when you've seen so many, doesn't it? And now it's a 4-4. Four, four. So a land will probably be Rebuke. Unless they have some other craziness they want to do. <clears throat> Still got the expertise. So they can follow up the next turn with the expertise as well. That's a... Such a scary card to see. When I'm using it, I don't really feel the fear of it, but when I see it in my opponent's hand, it's like, damn, that it is very effective. Oh no! They have the rebuke. Why don't they play the rebuke? <laughs> Please. I wasn't I just wanted to see what I just wanted a good long game. Damn it. All right, let's get this out of the way. I absolutely love this deck. So good. So so powerful. And we pretty much won most of the games we played, which is kind of surprising. Um the only thing that I had problems with was the mono blue deck because I think everyone has problems with mono blue decks. Who who are we kidding here? I, I've never met a single person that said they enjoyed playing mono blue decks, and yeah, I play them sometimes. But I'm I was just shocked at the speed of that player, and it there's no there's no way around that. You, you're gonna you're gonna get opponents like that on arena. That's you know that's all I can say. You're gonna get people like that who are very good, who will kill you very fast, and you know what ultimate respect and you get people like that who think they're good and play fetch lands and mono decks and think they're the absolute tits but they're actually just a shit player i'm sorry uh and yeah that is mean and i don't care it's mean and it it's the whole thing of like oh do you want to race really fast sports cars and then like okay let's race really fast spot fast sports cars you both get your sports cars and you and your parents just like wacky races they're like driving into the walls they're blowing up smoke's coming out and it affects Affects your attitude because you think, oh, I thought I was going to have an actual challenge here. You know, it's just, it's just not cool, man. <clears throat> Need to, if you want to hone your skills as a player, don't start with Thassa. <laughs> okay. If you want to hone your skills, do not go with a mono blue counter flicker cancer strategy with double triggers on meter golem. That is a dick move and you will, you will just incur the hatred at everyone you face. And unless you beat people quick, you ain't gonna, you, you just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's just, I'm just ranting. It's annoying because I know I beat them. Saw, saw winner, whatever. I just don't appreciate it. Anyway, this deck, awesome, powerful, unique, technically marvelous. It really awakens the, you know, the the player within. It, it makes you play magic. I like cards like this. It makes you think about your moves. It's more like chess. There's so many pieces going on. Um, and yeah, everything in this deck is pretty much designed to give you two for ones in at some point or another. I think one of the most busted things I saw in the testing I did was uh, I had this Glitter out. And she's okay. She's not too good. Not too good. But the fact you make two tokens every turn is what makes her incredibly good. The tokens can then become creatures that then attack. They can be sacrificed to Izoni, which is exactly what I was doing. Obviously, if you have Doubling Season now or Parallel Lives, the two tokens becomes four tokens. You can start whacking people left, right, and center. And yeah, like we didn't actually get too many of these out in the games today, did we? In the in the gameplay. So we didn't really get to see them in motion, but we do know what they, they do anyway. It's just, you know, in theory, kind of a theory crafting, just imagining they, they had them out. It would just make everything magical Christmas land. Um, there's not really much else to say. I think Gallagher is just a really wonderful card as well. Triggers on every creature entry, not just non-tokens. Meat Hook Massacre is also pretty nice if you can get this out. Sack your creatures over and over again, make your opponent lose life. Kind of busted. That's why it was nerfed. This was a nerfed card. Because you would also gain life if a creature an opponent controls dies as well in the paper version of this. But yeah, give it a go. It's technical, so be wary. There's a lot of wild cards. It will test you. Uh, there is a there is a very random Dark Souls Citadel here that I've just seen, but that's just a holdover from another deck. doesn't really impact the deck too much. But yeah, it's just from Framework from another deck. I think it was Baba La Saga, which cared about creature types. Just if you were wondering why that's there. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. Why don't you watch another one of my videos? Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.